hello and welcome in the previous videos we have set up our uh, environment for uh, laravel development in this video we will understand the basic folder structure of the laravel project or a freshly created laravel project okay so what we will do is we'll uh, open a new terminal and create a new fresh project cd2 development let me make a directory for youtube cd to youtube and let's create a new project here curl let me just you now go to laravel documentation click here Okay, then let's get started on Linux. So let me just copy that, paste slash our project name. Let's give our project name a uh, something real life. So let's go with our let's say project management, project management system PMS. Okay, and give it a bash. So let's wait till until until it finishes. So this process we have done in previous video. Okay, for that we have created to do list application project. Okay, now we'll continue with this fresh project and till it installs. Let me just open this with the VS Code. See it is running all the images. So meanwhile it runs. Let me close this one and go to files development YouTube right click open in terminal and press code space dot for that you need to have VS code installed if you don't know how to install that uh, I'll create a video on that so let me know in the comment below if you need the video for VS code so for now i think it is finished so let's wait okay meanwhile it does this let's understand the folder structure okay let me just do a zoom out zoom in so the first folder is application folder or app folder in that we have all our backend logic in that we have the console folder wherein we have kernel file that we will be using later the main folder that we should be aware of are the http and models folder so in the http we have controllers and middlewares so what are controllers and middleware that we will learn in the separate unit of that particular topic so basically all you have to remember is in the controllers folder all our controllers will be residing and in the middlewares folder so there comes predefined middlewares so when we'll be creating new middlewares in the future so we'll be creating in this directory then this is the model directory in this we have our database models so we'll be creating models now bootstrap is the default uh, directory that we do not interact much with it okay so we can skip this for now now this is the config file wherein we have all our application config files and also the third party packages uh, config files we can export and uh, bring it here okay so for example we have an app dot php this is the main app configuration file wherein we are defining the name and we are taking the name from environment variable so this is the function method used to get the variable defined in the env file so what is the env file that we'll see then we have different different configuration assigned with this for example url of the application so yeah, locale or locale however you can speak callback locale then auth configuration 
so by default it is using the web card okay well when we are developing for apis we can change that or maybe it will be there somewhere here so here we are using the driver as session this is for authentication purpose similarly we have different different uh, configuration file for example we have database then mail so something like that so i think you got the basic idea of what type of file we should store in the config directory next we have the database uh, directory this will be interacting more often and this one the public resources and routes these are the main three directories and app directory as well will be interacting with these directories uh, frequently so let's understand them so first we have the database directory in this we have factories okay in the migration directory we have migrations it comes with these uh, default migrations so basically migrations are nothing but the schemas or the table structure we can define uh, for our database so for example this is the users table and uh, this is the structure of the uh, users table so what this means that we'll see in the dedicated video so for now you just see migrations are just schemas of a table or structure of a table then we have seeders that we'll see later but seeders and factories we have dedicated folders for that then next folder we have the public in this folder whatever we keep that will be publicly accessible so just make sure you do not keep any sensitive information in the in your public directory okay but you can keep your uh, you know css file js files or your whatever you know public facing files uh, that you want public to see or it is okay if the public can access it so just keep in the mind the sensitive information you should not keep in this directory then we have resources in this we have views folder this is the directory wherein we will be storing the views of our application uh, views are nothing but the pieces like home page about us contact us these files will be storing there and also the template files will be creating in this directory then language lang folder or directory lang is just you know for the multilingual support so by default it comes with english language you can add multiple languages here and that is a totally different you know attack or you can say project uh, to just make your application support in a different different languages so we'll maybe we'll keep it in the future for the future then we have the resources uh, this we have covered i think uh, the roots directory in this we these are the two files will be interacting more often but more frequently will be interacting with the web.php file in this video series and apis are for the same what we do in web the same thing will be doing here but this will be served as an api roots so in the web uh, it comes predefined uh, index root or you can say the main root of your application so whenever you type localhost enter this will be the root executed and this will be the view that will be rendered then this is the storage directory will be this will be storing you know our log files or our cache our uh, protected files or file uploads so this is the directory will be using to upload our files and all and this is this is very important directory this is uh, to run tests okay every project you should keep in mind that you should have a test so that when the future when you try to refactor your code it will be very helpful so we'll see we'll run basic test in our uh, in this series of laravel tutorial then we have two types of test so depending upon the type you can store your test in this so we have a feature test and unit test but in laravel mostly we go for feature test okay so we'll be building feature and testing them so we'll see this in our dedicated video or maybe video series then this is the vendor directory so this is you know laravel comes laravel is you can consider laravel as the combination of different different uh, small packages 
and so all the third party or the first party packages their files will be stored here for example to serve our, serve our project we are using sale okay so sale is also as a package you can see it here so in laravel if you go for this is the sale package okay so make sure you do not uh, change anything in the vendor directory because even if you make some changes and in the future if you update something this will be automatically you know uh, overwritten maybe or you can say sometimes vendor directory does not commit to your github or you are cloning a project from github and suddenly you see there is no vendor directory and once you do a composer install or a composer update this directory will create it with the you know default package related files and all your files uh, that you have changed will be lost so better not to change anything in here if you want to you know add something or change something uh, all you have to do is uh, most of the packages provide uh, whatever files they are allowed to change they, you can export them and store it in your resources or controller files or somewhere where you can you can change and keep the changes so that we'll see in the future and so basically this is for the directories now we'll understand the files so the main files you need to keep in mind is the .env file this is the very important file and you need to keep it secure so let's understand what is that file so basically it is storing all your uh, important configuration for example the name of your application so let's change this to project management system the environment so we do not have permission okay we'll see it so let's see yeah let me enter the password this is done Nothing. now yeah. so now we have saved this file okay this also defines the env that means the environment of your application whether it is in production or testing or local so that you can define it here so when you are uploading your uh, project to a web server on the production you need to change that plus you need to also change its debug mode to false so that by chance if any errors come so the end user cannot see the critical information related to your database your queries and stuff like that and this is an app key so this you can if it is not there you can generate it so let's suppose it is not there okay what we'll do we'll do a control plus tilt and it will open up a terminal let's say sale artisan key generate this is the command you need to write if that key is not present or if it is giving any error related to that key just press enter and see it is saying sale is not running so let me just do a sale up these are by the way aliases i have set up so if you know how to set up these aliases i will give a link in the description about that so i have started the everything now same command will run sorry key generate as you can see the key has been generated then so this is the address of your website so by default it is set to localhost and for now it is okay because our website will be hosted on localhost for that uh, for this video series so as you can see if i go to localhost i can see the default laravel page then this is different log channels these are your uh, database configurations okay this is your name of your database this is the username this is the password and uh, some other configuration that we'll see some other day so not required right now redis then this is email configurations aws uh, pusher notification purpose beat and scout driver melee search so it depends if you are adding third party packages to your application they may provide you with some api keys for example if you are adding let's say login with google then you may need to add something like google secret key equal to some random key so this is the file where you might want to add this okay and by default when you are uh, committing this to your version control you should not commit this file instead what you have to do is you just uh, whatever things you need in your env file you just copy them everything 
and paste the replica here and just remove everything the values okay so let me just undo that okay so by default it comes as a you know duplicate file as a duplicate file when you create a new fresh laravel project using curl command if you are using some other methods this file may not be present that time what you can do is you can just copy this file and paste them and just do a rename and remove the dot example okay and uh, do your changes appropriately here and it should work and these two are the kit related files that we'll see later when we are uh, adding git support to our project then this is the main artisan file that we are using to create uh, my controller models and uh, the related laravel related files then we have composer json this is the main uh, dependency management file wherein uh, we are requiring whatever packages we need for our application for example uh, for this current project we are using php 8.0.2 and the still sign means anything greater than point you know three four five whenever we do composer up update suppose there is a new php version available it will be upgraded so this you can read on the internet it is uh, widely av available or maybe if you need just uh, shoot in the comment below we'll have a separate video discussing all these symbols we have gazelle http 7.2 laravel framework 9.19 these are the packages we require to run our project for now this is the fresh laravel project so by default it will become in the future we'll add more packages to this file so it will be better it will be you know easy to understand so for now this is the dev package so the difference between require and required dev is that in the dev we are using the packages that are required in the development environment okay so on the server when you do composer install okay it will only install this okay and it will not install in these files in your server so it will be lightweight and these are some configuration that we'll see may, uh, maybe in the future so that's it for this uh, composer json and this is the log file okay this is auto generated whenever you write composer install or composer update the composer.log file will be generated okay so the benefit of composer.log file is you should always commit this to your server so for example you are uh, mentioning different different version for example php 8.0.2 so the composer.log file will contain this uh, data metadata so whenever uh, on the server you do composer install this is the exact version of your uh, php will be installed and this is the exact version of your uh, laravel framework will be installed so in future if the breaking changes breaking changes comes to any uh, of your packages your composer.log file will contains the exact version number and it will not break your uh, application so just a uh, quick tip and this file you know already in the previous videos we have seen that okay so let's you know clean that up clean it down mm. yeah so let's remove things that we are not required by our project in at least in not in this video series so mainly search not required mail hog let's keep it we may require it or we may not we'll see and yeah so yeah. dependency we need to remove that mail hog we can keep it selenium is not required and let's add php my admin of course so control o development let's see where i have kept the to-do list project mm. maybe here not here maybe in the desktop yep so let's open that and let me just copy that copy and 
paste in here make sure you follow the indentation properly even a single space can break this file so it is very very important to keep the indent properly then saved it save up minus t or dash t see php my admin is added let's test that refresh localhost 8081 sell password is password login and by default we do not have anything let's see then we have package.json this is the same file you know similar file to composer.json but this is for the node.js for node package purposes okay so if you are using react or view or you know anything related to node and npm then you may want to you know update this file or keep this file so you may need it depending upon your choice so we will not be needing this in our current project series then this is php init xml it is used for testing configuration okay so that will see in the testing video series or testing video then this is the readme file that you can update so let's see laravel tutorial for youtube if i save that and if i view this this is you know output so let's say basic beginners tutorial tutorials for youtube then this is the readme file of your project so you can you know write the instruction to set up your project if you're planning to publish it or maybe you want to share this project with others you may write uh, uses instructions for example uses then you can just write the instructions for example dot slash vendor bin sale up minus t so like this you can you know give the instructions in your readme file then this is the weed config okay previously uh, previously it was uh, you know uh, webpack and because it was slow to load and uh, it takes time to build up it uh, laravel team decided to go with weed so this is a totally separate discussion we will discuss it some other day for now this is the basic architecture of any laravel project so now i think you know uh, what a laravel architecture consists of and in the future you can if you come across any laravel project you know what where to look for your particular file so i think this much is it for this video in the next video we'll start building our project one by one and uh, yeah so see you guys in the next video do like share and subscribe and if you have any queries doubts please uh, write in the comments and we'll have a discussion there okay so see you guys thank you for watching and bye bye